In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the calibration for an NOVNA V1. This is the version 3.4 board, I believe with the EMI shields in the newer ABS case with the hand strap and the guitar pick stylus. So I'm going to assume that you want cables to be part of your measurement. If you intend to use cables with the Nano VNA, these will transform the impedance along the cable and change the phase. You want to include the cables in your calibration such that your measurement occurs at the end of the cable. Now, the load standards that come with the Nano VNA are male SMA connectors. That one's the open circuits doesn't have a pin. Male SMA connectors. But the cables that come with the Nano VNA are also male SMA connectors. So you'll have to use an adapter to attach the load standards. The kit comes with one adapter. Now, they intend for that adapter to be used as a through standard, and both as an adapter to connect to the standards. In the world of professional RF engineering, people will look at you with a lot of disgust if you go ahead and do that. It's very incorrect to do your calibration at the end of your measurement cables, not at the correct connector. So if we were going to work from here, we're supposed to use load standards that are female SMA load standards calibrated from the factory, not an adapter than a male SMA load standard. That's technically wrong, but the Nano VNA doesn't come with a kit for that, and I don't have a kit for that, so we're not going to use that. What I am going to use is a second female SMA connector here, and I'm going to run my calibrations at the output of these two SMA connectors. So now these SMA connectors are part of my cables and part of what is being calibrated out. This is an acceptable way to do it, but now we'll have a problem. We'll also need a through standard which does not come with the kit, which will just be a male SMA to a male SMA adapter. Now this is a rather cheap through standard, and the through is always the part that I have the most issues with getting a good calibration for. But this is going to be better than taking one of these off and running the through calibration at a different point on one of these cables than the rest of the calibration. So to be consistent, we'll run it at the end of these cables. So now the actual calibration steps are pretty straightforward. So we'll go into the menu and we'll reset any current calibration that's running, then that correction box should not be lit up with uh, a black background there. Then we'll go to calibrate, and it's going to run us through a standard SOLT calibration. If you are only calibrating port 1, you're only going to need to do the open, short, and load, and then you should stop. Don't bother doing the isolation if you're just doing a one port calibration. Just do open, short, load, stop. If you're going to do a two-port calibration, you'll need to do open, short, load, and through at a minimum. That's called a SALT. And you'll also probably want to do this extra isolation, ISOLN, step. So for this calibration, we'll start and we'll do the SOL part of this. And hopefully we won't be SOL on getting a good calibration, despite that this doesn't really come with the right cal kit to do this properly. So first, it's asking us for an open circuit, so we'll get the open circuit. That's the connector they give you that's just brass and has no center pin. You connect that to the end of this cable. And then you're going to want to press this button a couple times. It doesn't usually take if I only press it once, so I tend to press it two or three times. Make sure it's lit up black, and then that one's good to go. Next, we will go for the short circuit, which looks identical to the open circuit, except that it has a filled in part and a little pin right there. So we put the short circuit on and we will calibrate the short circuit again pressing it two or three times and we'll repeat the process for the load standard that they give us. I'm going to be using this brass load standard as my main load standard, this 50 ohm load. We connect that to the same port which is channel 0, port 1, and we measure the load. Press that button a couple times and now, if we were doing a one-port calibration, we would just go ahead and stop. But we're going to do a two-port calibration. So the next step is that isolation piece. Now, I'm going to take my main load standard, which is what I calibrated my port 1 with, and I'm going to place it on my channel 2. If you only have one load standard, the manual says that you should leave this guy open. But if you don't only have one load standard, it says that you should take another load standard and attach it to your channel 0, your, which is really your port 1. Then from here these are isolated, not touching each other, both terminated in 50 ohm loads, and you go ahead and you press isolation a couple times. Next we want to connect them together. Remembering that we're not going to take off the adapters, we will use a male to male SMA connector here, 
here, male to male SMA, and go between the two connectors. Once you have that on there nice and tight, you can go ahead and press the through button a couple times. And then we're going to press the done button. We'll save that and save two. And now if we open up the menu, we should see that the correction is in fact on. Now, we want to check our results. So that center piece right there is showing us the 50 ohm load that should be seen from port one at the end of the cable by being connected to port 2. And it's not exactly 50 ohms, and it's kind of spiraling around the center because there's transmission line in here that makes it look a little bit weird. So the phase is changing uh, as we go through our frequencies in terms of what this is measuring, and it's not exactly a 50 ohm match for the through standard. But the more important part with the through for most two-port measurements you're going to be making is the magnitude of S21. Now, That'll be channel 1, which is shown in blue here, and it'll be shown as a decibel value for how much attenuation is there. And you should see this should be basically 0. If we can get that to focus, it's 0 0.06 dB, minus 0 0.06 dB. So that is very good. We're not seeing any attenuation, which means we're calibrated to make attenuation measurements, at the very least, with our through standard. Next, we're going to want to check our other standards. So here's our load, the 50 ohm load we calibrated against. And that should be a dot for 50 ohms in the center of the Smith chart. Reflection coefficient 0, good matching. And that's what we see. And we see we have a S11 return loss of minus 65 dB at the center frequency this guy's looking at. And across the range, it never gets above minus 50 dB. So that's very good. It's seeing the 50 ohm load correctly. We'll take a look at the open circuit standard. This should be a dot on the far right, and we should see basically total reflection of our, all our power. So our return loss is like minus 0.01 dB. Very good. And then we'll look at a short circuit, which will be a dot on the far left side for, for reflection coefficient of minus 1. And again, our return loss will be like 0 dB. We're getting minus 0 0.03 dB right there. So very good, which means we're responding to all our calibration standards correctly and we are calibrated at the ends of these female SMA connectors here. Now for any measurement you make, you want to connect it after this point where the calibration is made. This is the correct way to do it, but this is not always the most practical way to do it. If you decide to cheat on this, if you only have one SMA adapter, or if you want to work directly from the ports, especially for using this as just a uh, antenna analyzer, that's fine. Like, do a SOL calibration here. I port 1, ignore port 2, and go ahead and make your return loss SWR measurements, no problem. But if you want to make through measurements and you want to do it properly, make sure that you calibrate to the same point on connectors, especially if you're going to use cables. Additionally, I don't think you can get a good two-port calibration out of this guy if you try to do it from these two ports right here, because you would need a through standard that goes from here to here. That's a very long through standard, which is probably going to transform the impedance pretty significantly. So don't go thinking you can easily just connect a cable between these two and that's a good through standard. This is going to cause lots of phase change and other issues as you sweep over frequencies. So I wouldn't want to do that. If I were going to do a two-port calibration, I'd use the cables and the shortest through standard I had around, which in this case was that male-to-male -male SMA connector. Well, in any case, I hope you found this video helpful um, in terms of how to do a correct calibration for the nano VNA. And maybe you'll consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing for more content.